Hello everyone, this is the North America Math Contest Go Go Go. Today we'll be working on the IB mathematics. Specifically, we'll talk about the AK the induction method and the contradiction method. This is a part of the IB diploma that it is going to be tested on the uh, test. So in this case, we have to understand both of them. Let's first talk about the induction of method. What is induction method? In the, it is that in the fields of mathematics, it's a method of proving that when pk is true, pk plus 1 is true as well. In terms of IB examination, it is often used to prove an uh, equality equation in the form of ax plus b uh, equal to bx, where ax and bx are equal. So let's talk about how we should do it. So let's give. Uh, let's talk about how we should need to how we need to write it in a correct format. Let's give a problem. We are required to prove that this is equal to g m. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to test the first four values of it. So in this case, it will be t m one. So it will be g one. Sorry, e one, e two, e three, e four, and the s n is the sum of the first n terms. So it will be g one, which is equal to e one. G2 is equal to E1 plus E2. The second one is G3. So it's E1 plus E2 plus E3. The next one is going to be E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4. So we are going to start, start stating the first statement. If for n is equal to 1, the left side is equal to G1. The right side is also equal to G1. However, uh, you are not forced to write it if the if it's not equal to it. So for example, if the uh, G1 is not equal in either, like if the left side and the right side are not equal, you can just simply abort the equation immediately by saying, by induction, since G1 is not equal to E1, this thing is not true for all n. Now we assume that it's n k, n is equal to k, because we want to prove that given pk is true, pk plus 1 is also true as well. So let's go back, uh, just give me a sec. Well, we, we then prove that for n is equal to k, assume that this is equal to gk. And the next sentence, and similarly, if it does not satisfy the condition, just say that it does not satisfy. This does not satisfy. And n, and then it's, and the t here is just referring to the n that does not satisfy the equation. So for example, it's g3. If at n is equal to 3, it does not satisfy. t is equal to 3. Let's now look at the next question. For n is equal to k plus 1, prove that this e is equal to g k plus 1. So, so in this case, it is n is equal to k plus 1. And then you derive it using the, the induction method, which is that one, uh, sigma 1 to k plus 1 is equal to sigma 1 to k and a sigma k to k plus 1. And it will end in the sentence. By induction, this statement is true or not true for ln in the form, in the range of z plus. Now we have a talk about it. Let's give out some example. Example 1. Uh, we want to prove that this thing is equal to n plus n divided by 3 n plus 1. So in this case, we first test 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's see what tn at 1 is. So we plug in n is equal to 1. So it's going to be 1 divided by 3 times 1 plus 1, so it's 1 over 4. For 2, let's do the same thing. One, uh, 2 is going to be 2 divided by 3 times 2 plus 1, so it's 2 divided by 7. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So 2 is going to be uh, 2 divided by uh, 2 is going to be... Uh, Mm, sorry, it should be it should be the left side. Sorry, the first one should be uh one divided by nine i square minus three i minus one. So you plug in one here, you get one over four, and then you plug the i is equal to two here. So one is equal to nine times two square uh, thirty six minus six minus two. So it's equal to one divided by eighteen. And the third one is this. You plug in three to here to the i here, so it becomes one to seventy. And 4, you plug in 4 into this part, into the i here, to get 1 over 130. And for this one, it is derived from, just, just give me a sec. 
it is derived from uh, it is derived from this. This one, it is derived from N, uh, T1 plus T2, which is 1 over 4 plus 1 over 28. This one is derived from T1 plus T2 plus T3. And this one is derived from T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4. We can see a generalized trend here, right? N is equal to 3 and plus 1. It seems like the first four is satisfying the condition. However, we cannot say that since the first four satisfy the condition, it works. We instead have to test it. For n is equal to 1, ls is equal to this, uh, because we plug 1 here. So it's 9 times 1 squared minus 3i, so 3 minus 2. 9 minus 3 minus 2 is going to 1 over 4. So left side is 1 over 4, and right side is also 1 over 4. Left side is equal to right side. So it works. Let's continue. For n is equal to k, assume that this thing is equal to uh, this. So in, in this case, we are assuming that this statement is true. And for n is equal to k plus 1, prove that this is equal to this. So it should be this. Sorry, sorry, I make a mistake here. It should be 1 to k. So we, have, we can use uh, the statement we mentioned here. To assume that it is true, and hence, we said we want to prove that this thing is true. Usually, you don't have to assume that because the problem already tells you that prove that this statement is true. Usually, the IB uh, will only uh, give you the problem like prove that this is true instead of prove or disapprove that this is true. So in this case, you can get uh, LS is equal to 1. K plus 1, this thing is equal to 1K plus this. So that would be easy because the right side, is uh, the starting point is K plus 1. The ending point is also K plus 1. So starting point and the ending point are equal. In this case, we are able to get 1, uh, K is divided by 3K plus 1 is plus 1 divided by 9K plus 1 square uh, minus 3K plus 1 minus 2. So in this case, we simplify it and we get this plus this, and hence becomes this, right? So in this case, we, uh, we are able to come up with the final uh, conclusion of this. k plus 1 is 3k plus 4. Right? So this is going to be the way we are going to do the first question. Now let's try another one, example. We are going to prove that this s up is equal to n plus 2 divided by 2. So let's test the first cases. This one, 1, we plug in 1 here, i is equal to 1 into here. So this become 1 plus 1 divided by 2, so it's 3 over 2. And we plug in the 2 into the i. So in this case, it's 1 plus 1 over 3. And we plug in, similarly, we plug in 3. It's 1 plus 1 over 4 and 1 plus 1 over 5. So p n here uh, is going to be the same same logic here. So it's 3 over 2, right? This one is referring to 3 over 2. This one is referring to 3 over 2 times 4 over 3. This one is referring to 3 over 2 times 4 over 3 times 5 over 4. This one is referring to uh, this. So in this case, we see that those uh, listed one works, so we can continue. Because if it doesn't work, then it means that the equation is not true. So we can just say, like, through testing this, uh, through testing the first four cases, we see that n is equal to what does not satisfy the condition. Now let's talk about n is equal to 1. For n is equal to 1, ls is equal to this, is equal to this thing, which is equal equivalent to 1 over 4, because 1 plus uh, 1 over 2 is equal to this. And the right, uh, sorry, it should be equal to 3 over 2. Sorry, I make a mistake here. It's 3 over 2. So the right side is uh, also the same thing. n plus 2, n is 1, right? 1 plus 2 divided by 2. So it's 3 over 2. And we are going to do the same thing for k. In this case, we substitute n with k. So we get a result of k plus 2 divided by 2. For n is equal to k plus 1, we assume that this. So in this case, we uh, plug in the n as k plus 1 plus 2 divides by 2. Now let's see how we are going to work on it. So in this case, we need to uh, talk about this, right? We need to do this. So we divide this into this part and this part. 
For this part, we already know that this is, is equal to this. It's equal to n plus 2 divided by 2. Because we already said, for n is equal to k, assume that this is equal to k plus 2 divided by 2. So in this case, is n plus 2 divided by 2. And for this part, we prove that this is equal to this, k plus 1 plus 2 divided by 2. So we uh, substitute this into here. Oh, wait, 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 never mind. Never mind, we don't substitute this. We see that since the product of this, the starting point is n plus 1, the ending point is also n plus 1. What we need to do is that we only need to plug in n plus 1 plus 1. So it is equal to n plus 2. n plus 2. Uh, n plus 1. We, we only need to plug in n plus 1 to the part where it is originally stated n. So it in, in, in this case, it becomes 1 plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus 1. This is n plus 2. So it says this, n plus 2 divided by 2, and this. 1 plus 1 divided by n plus 2. So we get n plus 2 divided by 2, n plus 3 divided by 2, and we get we cancel out the n, n plus 2, because one of them is on the numerator side and the other is on the denominator side. We get n plus 3 divided by 2, which is going to be our final answer. <sighs> Let's then talk about the example 3. Example 3 is still the same thing. We prove that this uh, n, i plus 1, and i is equal to 1, is equal to negative 1 uh, to the square power root of i minus 1 and times 2i two, two minus 1. In this case, we are able to, uh, we start the first thing, we plug in n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. We are able to get here 1, negative 5, uh, 1, negative 3, 5, negative 7. So in this case, we get s n is equal to this, 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 this. Which we, which is, we want to prove that this, we want to prove that this is equal to this thing, which, oh, uh, sorry, which the first, uh, based on the first four n's, the equation works. In this case, we are able to continue stating the four n is equal to one. For n is equal to one, we assume that the ls left side is equal to uh ne negative one times the power of i minus one times two i minus one is equal to one, and the right side is equal to one. Basically, uh, just calculate them, plugging the n here into the i. And what happens next is that we can, we, since we know that the n plus 1 is equal to true, what we are going to do is that we are going to get n plus, n is equal to k. We assume that this thing, we plug in i to k. And then uh, we are able to obtain k times negative 1 to the power of k minus 1. The next thing is uh, for n is equal to k plus 1, we prove the thing. We prove we want to prove that k plus one times negative one to the power of k is correct. So in this case, we use the same thing: this, 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 and you just do the basic algebra down below, and it will be working. You are able to get the result of negative one to the power of k times k plus one, which is the exact same thing as the one that is displayed above. In this case, it is true. So for this equation, we are we have now talked about the induction method, and we are going to talk about the conduction. Nope, this is going to be the contradiction part. Proof of contradiction. Proof of contradiction is to prove a claim by assuming that the claim is not right. It is very easy to understand. Basically, is that if basically we just stated like if it is false, it doesn't make sense, so it must be true. This is going to be that logic. Uh, it is also the basic way that we think about things, like compared to induction. It's like, if A is true, then B is correct. This is, usually we, we use the proof of contradiction in politics, but it will cause a lot of problems, as politics are more complex than mathematics. And there's usually a no nuanced consideration during this. So what we do is that a uh, proof of contradiction should follow the following structure. However, you should know that the following wordings may vary. By proof of a contradiction, assume the preposition is false, which claim 1 is false, and then we write the claim down here. We write the proof of the claim, and then I will conclude it by saying, hence, the preposition can or cannot be false, which means that the claim 1 is not true. Let's first talk about the example one. Use of the proof of contradiction to show that square root is rational. 
So by proof of contradiction, we assume that the proposition is uh, false, which uh, uh, square root of 2 should be irrational. So we assume that is A is equal to B, where A and B is equal to the lowest term. We get that the square root of 2 is equal to A divided by 2, and then we uh, square root both sides. 2 is equal to A squared divided by B squared. 2B squared is equal to A squared. From this equation, we can see that the A squared and B squared must be, if A is even, B must be even. So in this case, it causes the fact that A and B, if B is even, no matter what happens, I mean, if B is even, right? If we set B as even, A must be even. So in this case, since both of the, the, them are even, no matter how hard we try it, it will be, never be in the lowest term. And this contradicts the facts that uh, since it is, is irrational, A and B is, are in lowest term. So it contradicts this fact. Hence, the proposition cannot be false, which means that the square root of 2 is rational. And that represents the end of the concluding sentence for the contra uh, proof of contradiction. Here we come to the end of talking about the induction and sorry induction and contradiction methods for writing the proof, and I hope you have learned a lot about those two methods. Uh, see you next week. Bye bye.